Good day, this is Teacher Riza. This is our lesson 8 in Statistics and Probability, Random Sampling. With learning competency, illustrates random sampling. In our previous lesson, you have learned that the normal probability distribution is graphically represented by symmetrical bell-shaped curve known as the normal curve whose shape is determined by its mean and standard deviation. The normal probability distribution is regarded as the most significant probability distribution in the entire theory of statistics. So first we're going to discuss population and sample. Population is refers to the entire group that is under investigation or study, while sample is a subset taken which serves as a representation of the entire population. A specific sampling, sampling technique is used to select a sample. For example, a housewife buys a sack of rice. She examined only a handful of rice from the sack to find out whether it is good quality or not. So we're going to identify which is sample and population. So the population here is a sack of rice, while sample is a handful of rice. Next, your mother wants to know the taste of food she's cooking or preparing. She tasted only a spoonful of it. So population here is prepared food, while sample is a spoonful of food. Now that you already know the idea how to represent a sample of a population, next we're going to discuss the process of getting sample which are good representation of population. This process is called random sampling. So random sampling is a selection of n elements derived from a population n which is a subset of the investigation or experiment, where each sample point has an equal chance of being selected. An example of this is to determine the common size of shoes of her students, Mrs. Reyes drew her sample from a box containing the names of her students with their shoe sizes. Another example is to determine the performance of the senior high school students in statistics. The teachers draw 10 students from every senior high school class to take the statistics test. There are five types of random sampling techniques. The first one is lottery sampling. Second, systematic sampling. Third, stratified random sampling. Fourth, cluster sampling. And fifth, the multi-stage sampling. Lottery sampling is a sampling technique where every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. An example of this is each member of the population is assigned with a number which is written on a piece of paper and placed in a box or fishbowl. The researcher selects number pieces of paper from the box one at a time. All members that correspond to the selected numbers will make up the sample. Next, we have the systematic sampling. It is sampling technique in which members of the population are listed and samples are selected in intervals called sample intervals. Example, if we wish to draw a sample of 2,000 from a population of 6,000, we can select every third person in the list. So in practice, numbers between 1 and 30 will be randomly selected to act as a starting point. So we're going to choose the third person, the sixth person, ninth person, and so on. So we have here the procedure using systematic sampling. First, we're going to assign a number to each member of the population. Then, we're going to choose a random starting point n. Do this by dividing the number of members of population by the desired number of samples. For example, if the population is 100 and sample is 10, we're going to divide 100 by 10, which is also equal to 10. Third, from students n, 
skip count by n repeatedly until the desired number of samples is completed. Eliminate the numbers which have been previously selected. If we going to choose 15 sample from 30 sections, we're going to divide 30 by 15 and that is equal to 2. So choose from the first two students the random starting point using lottery. Suppose 2 was sele selected, then every second element of the population will be included in the sample. This is sections number 2, 4, 6, 8, and so on. The next we have the stratified random sampling. So it is a sampling procedure wherein the members of the population are grouped based on their homogeneity. The population is classified into subgroups called strata based on some characteristics such as age, gender, and etc. For example, a sample of 50 students is to be selected from the junior high school of CCNHS with a population of 1,500 of which 500 are in grade 7, 400 are in grade 8, 350 are in grade 9, and 250 are in grade 10. If the sample size is to be proportionally distributed, how many samples are to be taken from each stratum? Remember that we're going to get sample of 50 from the population of 1,500. So we're going to make a table of val table for column stratum size of the stratum and the number of samples. Since there are 500 grade 7, so we're going to divide 500 by the total of the population 1,500 and multiply that by the number of sample desired which is 50 and that is equal to 17. And since there are 400 grade 8, so divide 400 by 1,500, multiply it again by the number of samples 50, and that is equal to 13. And for 350 grade 9, divide by the total number of population, which is 1,500, multiplied by sample 50, and that is equal to 12. And for 250 grade 10, divide that again by 1,500, times 50 is equal to 8. So therefore, for 500 grade 7, we're going to get 17. For 400 grade 8, 8 sample is 13. For 350 grade 9, sample is 12. For 250 grade 10, sample is 8. And we have the total population of 1,500 and the total number of samples, which is 50. Next, we have the cluster sampling. It is sometimes called area sampling. It is applied on geographical basis. Like stratified sampling, the population is divided into groups called cluster. It's another probability sampling technique called cluster sampling. However, the clusters are heterogeneous groups of the population. The sample is taken through a random selection clusters and then all the members of the chosen clusters will be part of the sample. For example, suppose a researcher wants to study the effect of a certain teaching methodology among the students coming from a particular town. So instead, the researcher will randomly choose a few schools and then the students in the schools will be surveyed. The last one is we have the multi-stage sampling. It is done using a combination of different sampling techniques. For example, in a national survey, they're going to use lottery in selecting regions, cities, and then they're going to use stratified to determine the number of respondents from the chosen areas and clusters. So since you already know the different sampling techniques, the next things that you need to know is to determine the sample size to be taken from the population that is using the Slovens formula. The sample size n is determined by the formula n is equal to, we have the population size divided by 1 plus population size times the margin of error squared. For example, a researcher wants to study the academic performance in mathematics of students in CCNHS. 
the school has a population of 6,000 students. If the researchers allow a margin of error of 5%, how many students must be included in his sample? Remember that the population is 6,000. So first, we're going to write down the given where in the population is 6,000, margin of error is 5% or that is 0 0.05. Using the Solovens formula, we're going to substitute the value of n which is 6,000 divided by 1 plus 6,000 multiplied by 0 0.05 squared. And 0 0.05 squared is equal to 0 0.0025 times 6,000, that is 15 plus 1. So 6,000 divided by 16, that is equal to 375. So therefore, the researcher must take 375 students as his sample. Next, find the sample size required from the population of 10,000 given a margin of error of 5%. Use Sloven's formula, then distribute the sample based on the following strata. So we have here for class A is 500, class B is 2,500, class C is 3,000, and class D is 4,000. So remember that the population is 10,000. So first, we're going to identify the given where in the population 10,000, margin of error is 5%, or this is 0 0.05. Using the Sloven's formula, substitute the value of N and margin of error within 0 0.05 squared is 0 0.0025 times 10,000 that is equal to 25 and 1 plus 25 is 26 so 10,000 divided by 26 is equal to 385 so therefore we need only 385 samples from 10,000 so how we're going to distribute that so again we have for 500 class A divided that by the total of population which is 10,000 times the number of sample which is 385 and that is equal to 19.25 or 19. For 2,500 class B divided that by 10,000 multiplied by 385 which is the number of sample that is equal to 96.25 or 96. For 3,000 class C divided by 10,000 times 385, that is equal to 115.5 or 116. For 4,000 class D divided by 10,000, multiplied by 385, that is equal to 154. So we have a total of 10,000 population and a sample of 385. So for your activity, that is entitled Identify B. Identify the types of random sampling illustrated by the following situation. So you're going to write what random sampling use in this problem. So that's 1 to 5 and 6 to 10. Then for activity 2, determine the sample size required for the given population using the Slovens formula. So we have first you're going to find the sample size, then the next, you're going to distribute the sample size. So using the table on the right side. So before we end, let me share this again and remind you the minimum health standards given by the Department of Health. So let's protect ourselves and stay safe, and stay healthy, and please stay at home. So again, thank you and have a nice day.